Welcome back. So I'm new with the Bolt, as many of you are. It's been a few days, almost a week now, and I haven't run any test cards yet. What I have been doing is trying to run different little sample graphics or designs on different materials, because I just want to watch this thing perform and see the output from it. I'm trying to work with slate coasters, and I find myself playing a game of chicken with the laser indicator. So I stop for a second, I think to myself, there has to be a better way. Well, there is. And I'm going to show it to you today on LaserNug. So I just came up with a quick, simple design that I could send to the laser and try to engrave on a slate coaster. I've got it created here. It's my logo. I've got her all fixed up. You selected. There we go. And I'm going to send it to the laser. Okay. It's at the laser. I grab my slate coaster, I place it on my honeycomb, and I try to move my laser to the very edge so I can set my origin. But here's the problem I'm having. I'm having a hard time getting that laser dot to sit right on the edge of the flat part of the coaster. I just can't get it there. It either goes a little too far one way or a little too far the other. I know what you're thinking. GP, just pick the coaster up and move it to where you want it. Don't move the laser. And you're right. I could also run up to the laser toolbar and I could click on center finder, which is going to allow me to find the very center and help me to set an origin on the very edge of that coaster. But I kind of thought there's a bigger application here. You're not always going to have a small coaster or some smaller piece of material that you can just easily pick up and move around on the honeycomb. What if I had a full 12 by 20 sheet with nothing cut out yet? I'd have nowhere to move it. And additionally, I'm not always going to have a round object to engrave. The fact is, that laser and that gantry, it moves very, very quickly when I push those buttons. And I thought there has to be an adjustment. So I dropped back to the computer took a look in the manual and you'll see that there is a section here that does provide some additional information in so far as the movement X and Y and Z on your control panel. It doesn't give a lot of description or instruction, but it was enough and all I needed. Let me show you. When your bolt comes to you from the factory, it's set at default speeds for how quickly you can move around the Y or the X axis. That moves pretty quick, but you can easily change that. In fact, you can pretty much change it on the fly, and I'm going to show you how. Remember how fast this went? If you enter your control panel, press on manual, you'll see you've got a nice clean screen with another set of speed and directional buttons for both your X, Y, and your Z axis. You're going to see a little measurement here that says two millimeters and it says nudge underneath. I'm going to show you that in a second. But if you follow your eyes over here to the right side of the screen, you'll see a little rabbit and you'll see a measurement there. So many millimeters per second. If you touch that, you'll see it changes to a little turtle and it's at 20 millimeters per second. Take a look at what that does when I push these buttons down here. <laughs> That's a little better. A little more my speed, so to speak. And if I want to move my Y axis, it does not affect my Z axis, but it affects my X and Y. It slows it right down. If I want to go back to a fast setting, I just touch that, put it back to rabbit, now I'm back to fast again. But that's not all. These settings for your rabbit and your turtle speeds are user definable. Right now I'm on fast. If I think that's either too slow or too fast, I can adjust the high speed to 100. And I can adjust my low speed to 10 and make it even slower if I want. Or I can go the other way. I press OK 
And now you'll see my high speed is at 100 millimeters per second and my low speed is at 10. It takes an immediate effect on the movement of your laser. Let's check it out. See? That's a much more comfortable speed for myself. And again, if I put it to slow speed or the turtle setting, now I've slowed it down to 10 millimeters per second in either direction. And then I can easily just go back to my home screen. But there's more. Tap back into manual. You've got a nudge and you've got a measurement in millimeters. It's currently set at two. What your nudge command does is if you unlock it and you push with either your X or Y axis, it will only move the laser two millimeters. This is just an excellent additional feature to managing the positioning of your laser because unlike your main directional controls, if you push one of these, your laser just keeps moving. If you use your nudge command, so you've unlocked this little padlock and you're using your directional buttons here, you can hold that button as long as you want. The laser will only move once and it will only move the distance that you've set in this box. Once again, user definable. I like two, but I could set it to three or 23. <laughs> Let me put that back. I'm going to move it back to two and over time and more experience, I'll decide what the right setting is for that. But now when I go to set my laser indicator positioning, I'm not going to keep sliding past it because I have the ability now to nudge it. I also have the ability to slow my laser down so that it's not screaming past my slate coaster. It's moving at a much slower rate, a rate that I determine. Excellent feature. Let's try it again. Okay. I'm gonna jump up to rabbit speed so I can get over closer. Okay, I'm now in on the slate coaster. I'm gonna stay on rabbit speed. As I get close to the edge, I'm gonna move and I'm gonna nudge it now. Isn't that nice? I am right on the edge of that coaster. So now I can take it in my rabbit or quick mode. I can bring it over. I can drop it down into turtle mode. So I move a little slower. And then I can use my nudge command to get it exactly where I want it to start my engraving. I'll set my origin. I'm going to frame my piece. That'll fit. And now I want to autofocus. And I'm ready to engrave. Before I do though, I noticed the first coaster I did, it's a pretty bright light coming off of there. And I think this slate coaster may be what they consider a reflective material. So I'm gonna use my laser safety glasses on this one. Let's run the job.
Not bad. So far, this is the setting I like the best. I think on the next test, I'm gonna increase the DPI because I think the power's good, the speed's good, but I still get the odd, tiny, tiny little dot you can see that it didn't clear. So we'll do that for test number four. I know a few of you are probably thinking, GP, you should have just used that centering tool in Lightburn. And you're right, I should have. But each day I'm learning a little more and I'm really pleased to have seen that once again, I found yet another feature that is so easy and intuitive to use on this Thunderbolt. I've only run about 15 jobs on it so far, but I am extraordinarily happy with my purchase. I hope you enjoyed the video today and I hope it was informative, especially if you're a brand new Bolt user as I am. Have a wonderful week and I hope to see you again on the next one. Cheers. And I could click on Center Finder, which is going to allow me to find the very center and help me to set an order.